This snake is in the same family as cobras, crates, mambas, so they are part of the elapidate family. They have front fixed fangs and they can easily deliver their venom. We're gonna be dealing with the forest cobra. We've got a big female forest cobra in here. She's roughly six foot or so. She's so dangerous. Look at that. That is a beautiful forest cobra. And not nearly as big as they could be. These snakes get massive. Feeding time. We're gonna be feeding the king cobra. So we've got defrosted, Burmese pythons. What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm currently hanging out in the snake house right next to my Papuan black snake. Come get a look. This Papuan black snake just busted out of its old skin, just came out of a good shed. There's chunks all over the place, and I'm going to need to clean this enclosure because she's actually gone to the bathroom as well. This girl is one of the most venomous of the Sudecus family. What's the Sudecus family? It includes the King Brown of Australia, one of the largest venomous snakes in Australia, getting upwards to eight feet long, huge venom yield. They're related to Colette snake, like meatball my Colette snake. They're also related to the red belly black snake. These different snakes have a nasty venom. They might not be the most venomous in Australia, but in the Sudecus family that has the King Brown, red belly black Colette snake, the Papuan black snake is the most venomous drop for drop in that family. This is a snake you make no mistake with. In the past, I've seen the snake go after food, grab a frozen thawed rat, literally contort its body to the point where it looks like an animated eel, grabbing onto the rat and just wiggling like crazy, pumping that venom into it. It is a very dangerous snake, but if you respect them, let them do their own thing, they're never gonna come into contact with you if you find yourself in the lowlands of Papua New Guinea. Now let's see, I am gonna unlock this enclosure. I got my can over here ready to go. I got all my cleaning supplies. I got a trash can full of spicy meatballs where this spicy meatball will end up in. Get all that debris out of there. Get a nice clean enclosure for this beautiful snake that you don't get to see often outside of Papua New Guinea. That's why it's such a privilege to have this snake in my collection. I literally have never seen a plain black snake in any other collection in the United States or outside of Papua New Guinea. I'm sure there's a few people out there in the world of venomous reptiles that might have them, but you just don't get to see them in zoological settings, which is another exciting part about this new facility to come. All these different species of snake, lizard, crocodilian, all these animals that you may have never even heard of that will be on display at this facility on these private tours so you guys can see these animals up close like nowhere else on the planet. Now let's see, I'm gonna open that up real smooth. This is a real shy snake, a real twitchy snake, so whenever I handle her, she jumps around a whole lot. Oop, just like that. See her flattening out her neck? This snake, oop, this snake is in the same family as cobras, crates, mambas, so they are part of the elapidate family. They have front fixed fangs, and they can easily deliver their venom. The reason I mention what family is because of that right there. See that? That is a little, a little hood. It's not completely like a cobra where they could prop up, look at you directly, and and hood up and look as big as messing as possible, but like most members of the Sudecus family, they have a mild hood like that so they can flare it out when they're upset. Red belly blacks do this, collect snakes do this, even black mambas will flatten out a little bit of their neck because they are all a part of the elapidate family. So they all that little trait where they can flatten out the ribs around their neck and look as menacing as possible. But as you can see, she wants to do nothing but get away from me. She's the most venomous in her family, she knows she is, but her last resort would, would be to actually envenom me. She wants nothing to do with me. If I let her go, she's gonna try to get away. Only time she gets a little crazy is if I grab her by the tail and I start handling her. But obviously, I have to handle her. I have to work with her because she's here in captivity. I need to take care of her. So let's get her into this can over here. Be real careful because we've had some... Oh, look at that, you missed it. She just bit the bottom of the trash can. I don't know if you're able to see that, but she just chomp right down on that plastic, she let go and she realized it's nothing. So let's close this. All right, we're good to go. This snake is not a snake to make a steak with. You would not want to get a bite from a Sudeca snake member. All right, let's go clean some enclosures. Let's start off and take all the skin out of here. Make sure that glass is clean. It could use a bit more of a cleaning. We'll give it a good spray. Let's see, let's flip that hide over. There we go, we got a little fecal right there. We'll get that little chunk off. Beautiful scalation, look at that snake. Look at those beautiful triangular scales overlapping. 
They are such a gnarly snake. To be able to work with this species here in America is a privilege. I cannot express enough how cool it is to work with this species. You got a little bit of the tail right there. You got the rest of the shed right here. Looking good. I prefer a whole shed, but not all snakes will pop out of whole sheds. It's just how it is. If anything, I can make it better in the future by adding more humidity. Who knows, maybe we'll do like a bioactive setup in the future since she's not a massive snake. So there's always potential to change and get better and better. And that's what this new facility is all about. We're gonna be upgrading all the enclosures. We're gonna have walking king cobra enclosures. We're gonna have big setups for the large rattlesnakes like Senor Pepe, my huge Mexican West Coast rattlesnake. Everyone's gonna get an upgrade. And then after everyone's gone an upgrade, we're gonna be moving on to the big ones, my favorite crocodiles. We're gonna get huge ponds, naturalistic ponds for all the crocs. Everyone's gonna have lots of space to be able to breed, get exercise. So much good stuff coming down the road. I can't wait to share with you guys. Life's really good, life's really good. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, spicy! Ooh, regal! Oh! Add graphic. Oh! All right, so we, we're good on water. I'm gonna clean the glass. We're gonna put everything back together. Then we're gonna put that plain black snake back in its enclosure. I'll see you guys in a second. All right, beautiful people. We've gotten the enclosure taken care of. We're about to put her back inside. So let's get going. Got everything cleared, ready to go. Rock is right there. Cage is open. Let's do this. Get ready in athletic position. Uh-oh. Oh, there she is. I thought she was up on the lip somewhere. She was actually just quoted at that bottom. That is such a unique looking snake. You wouldn't think by looking at this snake that is extremely deadly. If you didn't know me and you saw this snake crawling around somewhere, you probably assume that it's not venomous because it looks like something common from North America, like a black racer or some other kluger. But no, this is a very dangerous member of the Elapidae family. Watch out, here she comes. Oh, oh, oh. Relax. There we go. Look at her. She has become such a beast. Uh, she had some scarring here and there. She still has a little. Don't mind yourself. Ooh, she's hissing. She's upset. Uh, she had a little bit of scarring, and every time she sheds her skin more and more, she starts to look better and better with her coloration. So she's doing good. This snake is actually around eight years old, according to a buddy of mine in the venomous world. He used to work with this snake, so she's got some age on her, but she should live a wonderful long life at Chandler's Wild World for years to come. So let's get her into her enclosure, nice and safe. There we go. What a special snake. That is a real gem in the world of venomous reptiles or in the world of reptiles in general. What are you doing? Childish Gambino hanging out right up here at the glass. He hasn't had a meal in probably about two weeks and he's gonna have to wait about another week because he's on a little bit of a diet. Big fat body bit of snakes like that, you don't want to overfeed, you can make them obese and shorten their life. So, oh, Allison, what's going on? Allison the Black Mama, she came out of her shed a couple of days ago, looking all clean and beautiful. Oh, sorry. She's looking real happy. She's like, you better go get me a rat. Come on, two rats every week. Where's my rat? So, okay, next, not going too far for this one, we're going to be dealing with the forest cobra. We've got a big female forest cobra in here. She's roughly six foot or so. She's so dangerous. She is a very dangerous snake. Defensive, but very dangerous. This animal is so athletic. It's just full of muscle. When I handle this snake, I can feel the muscles all along the skeletal system. This snake is a beast. And easily with those muscles can shoot up its own body and nearly hit me in the chest. That's why when I deal with these African snakes, or just venomous snakes in general, it's a rule of thumb. Always keep your eyes on the head of the snake. Never deviate. The second you look away, you just got struck. Danger. All right, so let's do this. Let me see. Get this enclosure unlocked. Try to see where she's at right now. All right, so she's inside that hide. That big artificial hide. She's pooped all along the glass. We have to do a nice clean for this one. Let me see. I'm going to flip that hide a little bit. She's looking thick and beautiful. Look at her. That is a beast of a forest cobra. They are notorious in the world of handling venomous reptiles. Oh, just because of their tenacity, their, their ability to defend themselves woo, with the most, most athleticism and threat display. I mean, they love to gape. She's still a little thick. She's probably gonna have to go to the bathroom soon, so I wanna be real gentle. Let's see, look at her. She is looking real thick. 
She's investigating, she's looking around, she actually just must a little bit, letting me know she's not happy. It's a little bit of a mix of poo and pee and pheromones as a signal, as a signal to a predator. I'll try to be real gentle because like I said, she's digesting some food, you can see how thick she is. Look at that, that is a beast of a forced coat. Let's get her in that snake holding receptacle. There we go. Watch out, she might shoot up in a second. The longest true cobra on the planet. This snake can get well over eight feet long, ranking it as the longest true cobra on the planet and the longest cobra in Africa. You wouldn't want to take a bite off that snake. Not just are they all muscular all over their body, but also around their skull. So when they bite down, they have an incredible bite force. You don't want to get tagged by that snake. So, let's move on. Let's get this glass cleaned up. Oh my goodness, they're like little french fries. I've never seen them like that before. That's interesting. That's a spicy french fry. Ooh, mama mia. All right, let's go get these in the fryer. All right, guys, I'll get back to you when I'm done cleaning the enclosure. See you in a split second. All right, guys, we're done. Ready to put her back in her enclosure. All right, let's get ready. You don't know where she's at, so let's check. She's right there at the bottom. Such a beautiful snake. Let me just be real gentle with her so she's not too crazy with me. Oh, look at that. That is a beautiful forest cobra. And not nearly as big as they could be. These snakes get massive. Hopefully one day I can get a male and I'll have a big, beautiful forest cobra. Looking around. So let's get the snake back inside the enclosure, be real gentle because she's still digesting some food. Here we go. Don't fight yourself. Go back in there. Good girl. There you go. That's a thick snake. Beautiful. All right, let's get her into that enclosure. Make sure it's locked and secure. Now we're gonna do something that you guys oh so love so much. Let me get ready, let me get ready. Feeding time. We're gonna be feeding the King Cobra. So we've got defrosted, Burmese pythons in these bags that were donated by Kevin the Python Hunter. Thank you so much for the donations. I really do appreciate it. He spends day in and day out going out to the Everglades removing invasive Burmese pythons. So their bodies can get disposed of and get some good use. We feed them to the King Cobras because King Cobras are snake eaters. And in their native range of India and Southeast Asia, you can find Burmese pythons. So they're actually eating these animals out in the wild. So it works out really good. We have the invasive problem, put the bodies to use so we can dispose of them properly. We feed them out to the king cobras if they're under six feet long. Works out pretty good. And it definitely helps out with making use of these carcasses. Let's see, we got one python right here. They both seem to be about like five, six foot long. They had the heads chopped off. I believe that has to do with uh, recording the numbers of pythons that come in per python hunter. So you can't bring the same one over and over again. Look at that, two beautiful pythons, nice and fresh. They've been in the freezer for probably a month plus to actually kill off all the parasites inside. And these snakes are good to go for the, them to chomp down and eat up. All right, first things first, we gotta get that tortoise shell out of there. So she has plenty of space to chow down. She's looking that way. So I'm gonna go real smooth and get this shell out of there. It's on the opposite side. It's okay, Raven. Look how beautiful she is. She has gone through shed recently, so she's looking magnificent. Look how beautiful her coloration is. All right, she's hungry. We're gonna give her food right now. Let's get that close for a second. This looks like a good sized python. She's gonna slurp this up like it's nothing, believe it or not. So if you guys are new to the channel, these snakes love to eat pythons. In the wild, whoop, in the wild, this snake species will eat pythons, They'll eat big colubrids, like the red tail racers, which is like a big rat snake in Southeast Asia. They'll also eat monitor lizards. They'll eat clouded monitors, bangle monitors. They'll actually envenomate them, get their fangs through that hide. The venom overpowers those reptiles, and these king cobras feed down like it's nothing. She's growling right now. She's real upset. The python's in there. We're good to go. To make it nice and safe, we're going to close this up. And we'll see your feast in a second. Look down here, Kevin's ready to go too, he's hungry. You know what? While well, we've got that python up there for Justina, it's gonna take a second for her to get comfortable. Let's feed Kevin too. He's so hungry. He's, he hasn't eaten in a little while because he's going through shed. And uh, wasn't gonna feed him when he was in blue. Got another good thick python. Look how thick this thing is. Look at that, look at that meat. That is 
good for a king cobra. Lots of nutrition, all the gutty content in there that they need. Just like crocodiles, snakes too need a lot of the organs in their prey items so they can get vitamins and whatnot. So you wouldn't just feed a crocodile chicken, you'd also give it whole body prey items just like these snakes. They need all that nutrition. You want it? Huh? I know it doesn't have a head. Isn't that strange? It doesn't have a head. You want it? Huh? Look at that. Isn't that? You want it? Huh? It's so odd, isn't it? He's using his forked tongue to figure it out. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's all for you, buddy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't be scared. Checking it out. Gonna give it a bite. Huh? He's just investigating, he's like, what is going on? He's like, so interesting. He's just investigating, looking for a good spot to chomp down on. And it looks like he's going right towards that neck. There we go, look at that. Look at that chomp. He's going to make a good meal out of this once he feels nice and comfortable. There we go, good boy. He's just chomping down. You can see those gummy sheets that hold those front fixed fangs the delivery system for their very, very dangerous venom. They might not be the most toxic venomous snake out there, but because they have such big venom glands, the bite drops so much venom, you go to toxicity overload. Can't wait to see this King Cobra and his new kingdom. He's gonna have his own trees in his enclosure. We're gonna plant bamboo in the background, add a naturalistic setting like bamboo leaves on the floor so he can he can hide amongst the bamboo leaves and oh, Justine's up here. She's actually headbutting right now. She's so into it. She needs to know that her python's in there. I don't have another one for her. Kevin's pulling his into the back. What I'll do is while Kevin's chewing down on this big python, he's figuring everything out. We'll close that so it's nice and secure. Justina just needs an opportunity to relax. She's on guard right now. Look at her. She smells the python. She's focused on me. Oh my goodness. All right, I want her to settle down and eat her food. I'm gonna back up, and we're gonna use the zoom on the camera so they feel comfortable. Looks like Justina is just at the last bit of tail right now. I'm going to take advantage of this opportunity while she's finishing up that tail. Put her hide, this tortoise shell, right back inside. Gotta be real careful. She'll still come out at me, even with that food. Get her nice and comfy. Get her tortoise shell back. Get her little tail back in there. Go ahead, go ahead. Look at her. She's just so magnificent. She's chomping down. She's just finishing up that little bit of tail. Let me just get this mulch out of the track so we can close this class properly. Bought me some time, that's real good. But right when she's around this part, she can still envenomate. So you wouldn't want to take a chance. Let me get my, my lock squared away, get her nice and secure. Now you guys, I know you guys love King Cobras. If you guys would like to help wild King Cobras in their natural habitat of India, Borneo, Thailand, then you guys can actually help support King Cobras by going to the King Cobra Conservancy, an organization that devotes their time to King Cobra conservation, and you can donate. And if you can't just donate and you want something a little bit out of it, you can get King Cobra Conservancy hats, shirts, uh, there's all kinds of merchandise that you can buy, and all the proceeds go back to King Cobra Conservation, buying them new trackers to track these animals out in the wild, uh, to pay for pamphlets, to educate the communities in rural India and Thailand, educating the public about why these animals are so important and why you shouldn't kill them, and call people like the King Cobra Conservancy to come remove those animals from those areas like their homes. So, support the King Cobra Conservancy, you're supporting the kingdom of the King Cobras. I thank you, the King Cobras thank you, and the King Cobra Conservancy thanks you. Check out the links below. Locked and secured, we're good to go. We're gonna leave the King Cobras be. They're gonna be digesting their meals over the next week and a half. And for now, I'm gonna go enjoy a meal with my Gila Monsters. What are you guys doing, huh? You enjoying some eggs? You're chomping down on a pretty big egg. You're gonna be able to eat all that on your own? Yeah, I think this guy's about to swallow a whole quail egg. 
They love their quail eggs. These guys come from Arizona. They are a beautiful venomous lizard and their, their venom glands are actually in the bottom of their jaw so they can easily just chomp you real quick and they can give you a little dose of venom. You wouldn't die from the venom, but it would make you feel agonizing pain for days, maybe even almost up to a week. Cold sweats, vomiting, headaches, not something you'd like to enjoy. Isn't that right? But you're enjoying those eggs pretty good, huh? You gotta keep your lizards happy. Isn't that right? Ooh, scratch him on the side, he likes it. Ooh, he's slurping it up. Here you go, take it all. Good boy, good boy. That's a good little monster. <laughs> like me when I eat. All right guys, I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, enjoy your wildlife and stay gangster. Oh my goodness, they're like little french fries. I've never seen them like that before. That's interesting. That's a spicy French fry.